In this example, we've been asked to integrate 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 1 with respect to x. I note that this is a rational function. I see that it's a quadratic in the denominator. This quadratic cannot be easily factorized. I can't think of any factors that multiply to give 1 and add to give 4. So this suggests that I need to complete the squares on the bottom line here for this quadratic to get it into hopefully a standard integral. So we'll just deal with the quadratic first on the bottom line x squared plus 4x plus 1. To complete the squares I'll just write down the first two terms x squared plus 4x and I note the coefficient of x which is 4 in this case. The process of completing the squares requires me to halve that coefficient which is 2 and square that which is 4. I add in that 4 right there. To make these two lines equal I then have to subtract 4 and I've also got the plus 1 which is here as well so I add in the plus 1 to make sure they're equal. If I've done that process correct the first three terms here should give me a perfect square which they do x plus 2 all squared I can just double check that x squared plus 2 times 2 times x is 4x plus 2 squared is 4 Gather the remaining terms, minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. So putting that into the integral, which I can now call i, will equal 1 divided by my perfect square, x plus 2 all squared, minus 3. I'm integrating that with respect to x. So I've got a perfect square here with a linear term. It's always good to make a substitution for a linear term, so we'll try and integrate this by letting u equal x plus 2. du dx here is just 1, so that would mean that du is equal to dx. I substitute all those in, I get the integrand in terms of u, and dx transforms to just du. So I should be able to recognize this integral as one that's uh, off the standard integral table. Uh, or I might be able to integrate this by splitting it up into uh, partial fractions. Writing this as the difference of two squares, u squared minus the square root of 3 all squared, and using partial fractions. We'll look at both methods here, but first of all, let's see if this one is on the table of integrals. So I go over to the table and I look to the bottom here on the left hand side and I can see the integral that I want 1 over a squared minus x squared dx so x is the variable and a is just a, is the constant. I can see I get an integral, uh, an answer straight out here it's in terms of a log. So first of all I want to use this standard integral but I have to get the integral I've got in terms of this a squared minus x squared dx. So going back to my question here, I'll note that I'm going to use a table, using the table, just make some notes here. So I'm going to replace u with x to get the same as what's on the table, just using the fact that the table is in terms of x and I'm in terms of u. Uh, I'm going to let a equal the square root of 3. In the standard table, in the standard integral, I've got a squared here now. So that's 3, so I need to let a equal root 3 so that a squared is equal to 3. Also note that on the table, we've got the constants first, a squared minus x squared dx. Whereas in my example, with the variable u, I've got the variable first, u squared minus 3. So for me to put this into the same form, I've got to swap these around and to do that I'm, I've got to take out a, a negative out of the bottom line here. So if I factorize out a negative that'll become plus 3 and minus u squared and I'll put that negative out the front here. So this integral i can be written as minus the integral 1 divided by it'll now be th uh, 3 minus u squared but instead of 3 I'm going to write a squared, which is the square root of 3, all squared. The square root of 3, all squared, minus u squared, and this is all integrated with respect to u. So just that move again, 
to, to make sure it's the same as the standard integral over here, I need the constants minus the variables, a squared minus x squared. I had variables u squared minus constant 3, which I'm writing as the square root of 3 all squared. So to factorize and to get that around the other way, I swap them around, factorize out the minus 1, and you can see that these two statements are exactly the same. But now this one is in the same form as my standard integral, except I have a negative at the front. So I've got a negative in the front of the integral here. I'll just be multiplying a negative at the front of my answer. So now this is in the same form. I translate the solution here over onto my question, remembering that I'm replacing the u with the x, and any a I see is actually equal to the square root of 3, and I've got this negative out the front. So let's write that out. I've got a negative out the front. Looking at the standard table, the first term, 1 over 2a. So in my solution, that is 1 divided by 2 root 3. And I have the log of modular science here, a plus x over a minus x. That gives me then the log modular science a plus x is replaced with root 3 plus u divided by square root of 3 minus u. Just double check that again. a plus x over a minus x, a plus u over a a minus u, which is what we've got here. All of this is multiplied by negative 1. We'll deal with that soon. And we have a plus c that can be outside the brackets here, plus the arbitrary constant. So that's the end of my integrals. Uh, the question was given to me in terms of x, so I should substitute back in for u. u is equal to x plus 2. I can put that up to here. And we can have a look at that now. Minus 1 divided by 2 root 3. Don't need the brackets. Log of. Substituting in x plus 2 root 3 plus x plus 2. All divided by the square root of 3. Minus. Be careful with the minuses now. So the negative of x plus 2 means minus x and the minus 2 as well. Minus x minus 2. And all of that is plus an arbitrary constant, plus c. We can neaten this up a little bit, particularly the minus sign in the front. Usually what will happen is if uh, with a log, you don't want to see a negative coefficient in front. So we use the power law. The negative in front here can come inside the log as a power. So this whole fraction is raised to the power of minus 1. That's the minus 1 that's in front as a coefficient. comes inside the log. Whatever's inside the log is raised to the power of minus 1. If this is a fraction, raised to the power of minus 1 means we just take the reciprocal. So in one step, I can remove the negative from the coefficient out the front and think that that negative is going to mean I take the reciprocal of this fraction. So this fraction raised to the minus 1 takes the reciprocal, and so the bottom line here will become up the top line, etc. Now rearrange this a little bit as well. I want to put the numbers together, the x's together. Let's see what we get here. I'm going to write minus x minus 2 plus root 3. So that's the bottom line that's come up to the top now, minus x, minus 2 plus root 3. And the top line, which is now comes onto the bottom line, is x plus 2 plus root 3. All of this is plus an arbitrary constant. That looks a little bit neater. The thing that I don't like now are these negatives in here. So I'm going to think of, this is the modulus of this top line. The modulus of a fraction just mean, uh, is the same as the modulus of the top line and the modulus of the bottom line. So just as a side note over here, we'll note that the modulus of negative x minus 2 plus root 3, I'm trying to get rid of these negatives in front of the x's. I can write that as the modulus of minus 1 times x plus 2 minus root 3. And the modulus of this product now is the product of the modulus. So I can just take the modulus of minus 1, which is 1, and the modulus of this. And so I'm just left with 
x plus 2 minus root 3. So substituting that back into my integral will give me a slightly more neat looking answer and so it's 1 over 2 root 3 times the log of x plus 2 minus root 3 all divided by x plus 2 plus root 3 modulus of all of that plus an arbitrary constant. I want to demonstrate the other option that we had up the top here from this integral instead of using the table. So we've also been asked to, to integrate, we've transformed our integral using the completing the squares into a standard integral that we have here. If we didn't have the table or we're not comfortable using the table, I want to be able to do this integral as well and the way we do that is with partial fractions. So at this stage here, we want to come down and show the other example. So we'll start with the integral that we had 1 over u squared minus 3 du. The first part of the example doesn't change. The completing the squares, making the substitution doesn't change. I want to set this up as partial fractions. So just dealing with the integrand in the middle, u squared minus 3, I'm writing that as a difference of two squares, u squared minus the square root of 3 all squared. So now I have the difference of two squares, so I know that factorizes. The two factors will be u minus root 3 and u plus root 3. And so now I've got two factors on the bottom. Each factor is linear. That's what I like. And I want to set this up in partial fractions. So a over the first linear term, u minus root 3, plus b divided by the second linear term, u plus root 3. And now I just need to use the standard form of partial fractions to solve for a and b. I've transformed this product or this rational function with a quadratic on the bottom line into two partial fractions which I should be able to integrate separately. So the partial fractions I imagine multiplying by this whole factor, these two factors on the bottom, up to the top line with the a, up to the top line with the b, you'll see that some one factor cancels with each of the factors on the bottom and I'm left with a one line equation which will say 1 is equal to a outside of u plus root 3 plus b outside of u minus root 3. Just double check the partial fractions there. So under a I have u minus root 3. When I multiply by both of these factors they come up to the top line and it's the u minus root 3 that will cancel so I'm left with u plus root 3. So that looks good. Underneath the b I have u plus root 3. When multiplying by both factors on the bottom line here they come up to the top with the b and it's the u plus root 3 factors that will cancel so b will be left with u minus root 3 which we have there. In this one line equation now I need to solve for a and b. The easiest way to do that is with the cover up method. So to solve for a I want to cover up B, so I need to choose a U value which makes this whole term equal 0, so I'm going to let U equal the square root of 3. When I substitute that into the whole equation, I get 1 is equal to 2 times root 3A plus 0, so I don't write that. I can rewrite then, rearrange this for A, and I see that A is equal to 1 over 2 root 3. To solve for b, I want to cover up a, so I want this term here, this factor, to be 0. So u will equal minus root 3, and I'll substitute that into the whole equation, where u is equal to minus root 3. Left-hand side is still 1. The first term is 0, because u is minus root 3, plus root 3 is 0. And it's this one here I'm left with, and I can see I'll get minus 2 root 3 times b, and so I can rearrange that for b, and I get 1 divided by, it's a negative, 2 root 3. 
So I have my factors for A and B, substituting them back into my partial fractions, substituting both of those back into the integral. I can rewrite the integral. I is now equal to the integral of 1 on 2 root 3, all divided by u minus root 3, plus, substitute in for b, which is a negative 1 on 2 root 3, so negative 1 on 2 root 3, divided by u plus root 3, and I'm integrating all of that with respect to u. This looks very messy. We've got a fraction inside a fraction. Both of these have got 1 on 2 root 3. I'm going to take that straight out the front as a factor. I get 1 on 2 root 3. Outside of the integral, we'll be left with 1 over u minus root 3. We've left the negative in the second term here. So the negative plus that negative, the whole term will become negative 1 over u plus root 3, and I'm taking the integral of that with respect to u. Each of these, we're just integrating now a linear term with respect to u. The derivative of u minus root 3 with respect to u is 1. That's on the top line, so the integral of the first term is a log. The derivative of u plus root 3 with respect to u is 1. That's on the top line, so this gives us a log as well. Remember the rule over at the side here that we've got, remember that the integral of the derivative of a function of x in this case divided by the function of x with respect to x, that gives us a log of the bottom line f of x plus an arbitrary constant. But you must have the derivative of the bottom line on the top line with respect to your variable. So that's why we can do it here. The derivative of the linear term is just 1. The derivative of this term is 1. So we have a log in each case. The integral then becomes 1 over 2 root 3 outside of the log of u minus root 3 minus the log, put in the modular signs, u plus root 3 and both of those integrals will have an arbitrary constant. We'll both add them both together to give one single arbitrary constant plus c. We can combine those two logs. Remember our log rules that you have the log of a function minus log of another function. You can combine those logs and it's the first function inside divided by the second function. So these we can combine to give us the log of u minus root 3 divided by u plus root 3. All of that multiplied by 1 on 2 root 3 plus an arbitrary constant plus c. There's all the integrals and the rearranging done. I want to substitute now back into the function for u. Remember right up the top we made a substitution u is equal to x plus 2. So when we substitute back in we get 1 over 2 root 3 outside of the log u is x plus 2, so we get x plus 2 minus root 3, all divided by x plus 2 plus root 3, the module of all of that, plus an arbitrary constant. And if we compare that to the method of using the table of integrals, there's our partial fractions, the table of integrals gave us exactly the same answer. Just check x plus 2 minus root 3, x plus 2 plus root 3. If we do it with partial fractions, x plus 2 minus root 3, x plus 2 plus root 3, it's the same answer. So demonstrating here that you can do an integral with two different methods using the table of standard integrals, using a partial fraction, and this all came from us, of course, using completing the squares as well. The completing the squares part right at the start just set up the integral for us, and then we looked at the two different methods.